Welcome to Anchored at Harbor Park CrossFit, a show dedicated to helping you find enrichment for the other 23 hours of your day outside of the gym. Here's your hosts, Jason, Dave, and Corian. Hola, ¿cómo está? Bien, ¿y tú? That's like all we got in Spanish, <laughs> so. Our members are going to be very mad at us when they listen to this. Sorry, guys. My goal is one day to learn Spanish again. All right, so moving on, we're on episode 14 of Anchored. Yay! We're actually filming this one in the new racing gym. On site. Yay! I, was gonna, the, I almost said live. But, <laughs> but in the soon to be uh, kitchen area. So that's exciting. There's still a lot of work to do. It's kind of a mess, but it'll be ready. Yeah. Two weeks? Yeah, about. That is our goal. June 15th. I'm excited. It's going to be nice in here. I was working out in Racine today, and as, as really much hot. as I, what did you say? It's really hot. Yeah, as much as I love uh, this weather, and I, I don't want to complain, I do love it. I'll take it all the time. But I was just doing some accessory work, and I was sweating today, which is exciting news for anybody who knows me. So. And it's, I think it's like 90 out, and this new space is actually pretty cool in here. Yeah, it's more like the Kenosha building where it just stays a little bit cooler. So. Yeah, and there's fans all over the ceiling, which is nice. I'm about to make some noise as I open up my Zevia. Sorry, everybody. We should we should Zevia taste test. You know, I was See thinking about that. Sunny. You know, Zevia, we might be carrying it. Yeah, I'm hoping we do. Um, can we get the energy drink yep. as well? Because this mango ginger. I was just talking to Jason. Raspberry lime. All right, icebreaker. I don't even know how I'm going to answer this one. If you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? Hmm. Can I go? Go ahead. I would be a pepper. Ooh. Because, you know, you can be... Okay, there's a lot. Ghost pepper? That's the thing. You can be (laughs) spicy. You can be colorful. There's a lot of variety there. I'd be an asparagus. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Because if you eat me, I'm going to make your pee smell really bad. Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, boy. Follow that one up. I would be a cucumber because you can be a cucumber or you could be a pickle. You could be a whole lot of different things. Cool as a cucumber. Yeah. Cucumber. Have you guys ever seen that video? Yes. Cucumber guy. That's probably one of my favorite things ever. I think you shared that one time. I don't know. Did you guys see the video that Robert Berry posted today about the guy pooping on the sidewalk? No. Why would you? (laughs) Yeah, it's just funny. Uh-oh. No. Okay, what's our topic? Should Let's we get into it, guys. Talk about something. We're talking about the levels program today. Yay. Perfect timing. Um, we do have test week coming up next week, coming in hot. Um, we hope you're all excited about that. So if I'm this excited is, about this it. Is coming out, this might be coming out at the end of test week. It'll be in the middle. Yeah. Towards at the, the end. end. Yep, yep. Um, oh, well. So. But people will still have questions on it, so we yeah, can reference yeah. it. No, this, this actually kind of works out well. So let's start with the purpose of the Levels program. Why was it created? To give focus. Yeah, so, I mean, the primary idea was, if you think about, like, uh, um, jiu-jitsu or karate, they kind of have, like, the, I don't know the color scheme, but, like, the red and the, the blue and then the yellow I think yellow it starts white, yellow... And then after that, I'm not quite sure. Right. It kind of, it, kind of, it does a few things. It gives you something to shoot for. So like if you come in at the white belt or whatever the starting belt is, you know what your next objective is, is to get that next belt. Um, something we found just having done CrossFit so, for so long is people come in, they work really, really hard, but they don't have anything to chase. So then they get burnt out and kind of just fade off. So the purpose of the level program, in part, was to give that next thing for someone to chase. So you come in, you do test week, you see where you fall, and you see where you're deficient in, and now we know where you, where you should spend some time to improve. Yeah, I think a lot of people, um, you know, I can't even remember what I had for you know, lunch a couple days ago. So sometimes I forget when I'm doing workouts, I'll be like, oh yeah, when's the last time that we did... 
X, Y, or Z. And so um, I think the, the levels program is nice because it brings out all those different um, things that you might not always get to do. Um, and it reminds you that those are things that you either want to do or maybe need to work on or, you know, different things like that. Yeah, I, the reason or what I like about test, test Week and the levels program is it also guides newer people um, in the beginning. So it's, it's very difficult to figure out in your journey when you first start out, what yeah. should I be lifting? And we incorporated that into our programming. So you, on the whiteboard, it says level one, level two, level three. It gives you that direction. But like you said, you know, if you don't have that direction, then you, you don't you kind of know where you're going. But it gives that direction. And then it also helps alleviate injuries, hopefully. Because you shouldn't, in your first two weeks, be saying, well, I'm an RX. That's just because the board says 95 or 115 pounds on that snatch, even though you can probably put it overhead, but you're not ready for it yet. Your body hasn't adjusted to these movements yet, so it kind of gives you that guidance and it limits those injuries. Side note tangent. So I was down in Kenosha yesterday, and Ed, Ed Methine was down, and he was talking with Blair and I, and I don't know, he said something about the dumbbells, and he was like, funny how every time we get a new weight of something, that becomes the RX. We only have one 75-pound dumbbell, and that's like the new RX. He was just kidding. But that made me think... Rx is just an arbitrary yeah. number. It doesn't. It's just something that we put on the board. So um, there's plenty of times that I can't Rx workouts or I'm not ready to Rx the workouts. We've been doing some of those regional workouts these last couple of weeks. Blair's been sprinkling them in, and I'm not not there. Whether it's the weight or the time domain or whatever, and that's fine. It gives me something to to like you said, work towards and, and to think about. Um, but it just, I just thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. Like when you think of a workout, um, the goal of a workout is we make a very specific intent. So like what is supposed to happen to your body during the workout? And then the RX weight or movement or whatever is just the, the avenue of getting to that intent. So if you RX a workout, but you're not ready for that avenue yet. If it's too difficult, you're not going to get the proper intent, and then you're not doing the workout properly. So like Dave just mentioned, the point of the levels, when you look on the board, if you're a level one, the point of level one is to give you the proper stimulus. Okay, so yeah, sometimes that means making the work or the movement easier or, or reducing the weight, but that is to get the proper stimulus and to make sure you're doing the workout right. Yeah, and that was something that took me a long time to realize, too. I mean, you don't know it unless somebody tells you. Being a coach now for a while, you can kind of pick up on that stuff. But when, you know, let's just say Blair programs something 75 pounds, um, the way you program is you program for the best athletes and you scale for everybody else. So Blair's programming based on what he knows he can do. Um, and then based on the weights and based on those time caps, that's how, like, you have to look at it. So if it's a sh- short time cap, heavy weight, it means he wants you to go heavy for you, but be able to move and get through that workout. You know, so like if if you're doing well, I'm gonna do 75 because the board says 75, and I want to do RX, but you don't finish, then you just didn't do the intended stimulus of that workout. Yeah, we talked about chasing RX before too. Right now, there are some exceptions. Say like you were an endurance athlete and you came in, you know, and you're really good at running, but level one says like cut the run in half because we're we're anticipating most new people, you know, a mile run might be challenging. So right. we'll say. Now, in that case, you know, we might um, allow you to skip that level. But in that kind of case, you should really talk to the coach first, mm-hmm. see what they have to, th- have to say about it. I um, literally had that happen. I had a girl, she's newer, she's been here about two, maybe three weeks, super sweet, um, and it was the run deadlift one. And she was like, I just ran a marathon. I could probably do that. But I, I, she couldn't do the deadlift weight. And so then I blended it for her. What was something that that weight was going to represent? But I'll let her still do the runs. Right. You know, and you're right. I think that you have to talk to the coach. You, these levels are more of a guide. You know, we've got Maggie who can, you know, deadlift more than most of our gentlemen in mm-hmm. the gym. So if it's a strength workout and it's something that's going to, you know, go to her favor, her doing level one or level two is arbitrary at that point. She can up that. The levels program, when you have a levels on the board, it's all a guidance really, kind of guide you in your journey. But yeah, like Jason and Corey have both said, there are times where you're going to be like, I know that my one rep max or I've done this movement before and I can, I'm really good at this one, you know, and it's generally, you know, you know your body, so those are the times that maybe, okay, you can go a little bit up, 
And that's where test week comes in, because you're testing most of these movements. So you know, OK, I've done that. I've achieved level three based on the sheets and the requirements for that movement, but I'm missing it on fight gone bad. So, so let's get into that. Let's talk about test week now. Um, it's coming up June 4th. We're changing it just a little bit. This makes me nervous. I don't we're, know why. So instead of two weeks with all the tests we have, we're just going to do one. And um, it's going to be more random. Like the, the actual tests will be randomly selected, kind of like you know the open is random and, and just CrossFit philosophy is be ready for anything type thing. Um, so we're going to do Monday through Friday, June 4th. Fourth through ninth, I think. Yeah, the week, the week that or maybe day June eighth. Um, um, yeah, and that's why I'm nervous because you know we all sit here and I love strength stuff, so of course I'm making sure that I get my strength workouts in, and I know I absolutely know that that row or that fight con bad is going to be in there. I'm like, dang, I have not not worked on that. So that like fun excitement, nervousness, just like the open is kind of like going on, mm-hmm. and I'm just yeah. like. Oh. Yeah, I like, I like it a lot. So it'll be the same test, just sprinkled in differently. So the next text week, right, is not going to be, put, put, potentially not going to be any of these ones that you see this right. week. So that's right. kind of cool. Yep. It kind of keeps that anticipation yep. up. Like, oh, darn, I haven't done that one, as opposed to, like you said. And we do test week every? Every three or four months. Yeah. And three times a year. And when it comes to the actual tests involved, these aren't just, like, random things that we make up and throw them in there. They are... Um, so CrossFit has this list of of ten attributes that they believe um, a person should be proficient in. Basically, the better at those you are, the more fit you are, mm-hmm. um, more healthy you are. So the movement or the the tests we do in Test Week are um, representation of those ten mm-hmm. physical traits. Yeah, I like them. Mm-hmm. I I know a couple of them. Let's see if we can name them all off. Accuracy, agility, strength. Anybody else? Speed. <laughs> Speed. Power. Power. Flexibility. Yep. Corian, you got to give us one or two. <laughs> Just so <laughs> got many. four left. You make me Google it. But you basically, agility. Yeah, I think so. That's hard. Explosiveness. explosiveness. Yeah, explosiveness. But basically what we're trying to say is like with this test, like we put these together to hit all of those and 10 so, physical Yeah, uh, and one skills. of the big things now too, especially because like during when we do the two weeks of test week, sometimes people just miss a day. And now that we're going down to the one week and like we said, we're not going to get all the tests in. The tests are always there. So if you're missing one, you haven't done it in a while, or um, it's the only thing you need to maybe hit that next level, um, good days to make them up are obviously Thursdays or Sundays. And we can do them any time in between these tests. We just make sure that there's a scheduled time that people get an opportunity to experience those tests. Yeah, I know there was a member last night that told me she was mad because she's going to be gone this week. And I was like, you can do them whenever you want, or you can make them up. On the, on the rest days, and then I told her it's only going to be four tests this time because mm-hmm. it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Friday. Still giving us Thursday off to make up, and then su- Saturday is just a normal workout, and then Sunday is just a rest day as normal. So those are perfect days to make those up. Yeah. So then let's get into, we did test week. We know how we fall on a few movements. Um, how do we determine our level? We have the sheets made up at both gyms. Um, each level we basically f- kind of outlined as coaches to figure out where we feel like each level should be so when you first start out and you sign up with us at Harbor Park and you start your foundations that's the first day you get basically you pass the Harbor Park benchmark and you get um, your level one patch so then you become level one so going forward we want you just focusing on level one and then uh, to test up you just have to look at the sheet and look what the requirements are to attain that level so I think I'm like teetering between, a, like with the new updates, because we're always updating it. I'm teetering between a, a three on most things, sometimes a four on some, but because I haven't passed certain things, I'm still technically a, a two based on these the requirements for some of them. Yeah, that's. I try to tell people, it's so there's one through five. Majority of our members are one or a two. Some of us are a three. Very, very few a four. And I don't think we have anybody that's no, a five anymore. Any, not even, so. I don't even think Blair no, is. Blair's not. 
So it just goes to show like there's a, a widespread and, and, you know, those jumps from level one to level two are a little bit less. It gets a little harder to jump from two to three, much harder to jump from three to four. And that would be the same, like Jason said, with karate or jiu-jitsu or any of those things that you're you're earning those levels, it gets a little bit harder to progress. Um, if you're confused about what level you are, there's always coaches around. We can help you. Um, it kind of outlines. But like Dave said, you're you're supposed to hit all of those requirements to be officially that level. Mm-hmm. And, and that is going to take some time. It's going to take some hard work. We don't want this to be like you're in, in CrossFit for six months and you do the tests and you're already level three. We want there to be some. We want you guys to put hard work into getting to that next level, because once you put hard work in for a long period of time, it's going to be way more rewarding mm-hmm. when you actually level up. Yeah, we don't give participation trophies. The only time you get that is from level one in your foundations, um, but you don't get that patch until you complete the Harbor Park benchmark. Mm-hmm. So there are some gyms that we know of that do. They go by time, so six months, here's your graduation. Then it goes eight months and a year or something like that. I don't agree with that because just because you've been here for a year doesn't mean you should be, like, level three. You know, you have to, like you said, earn it, and that's why we did this. And it's not easy. Right. I've heard several people, be, never going to get it because it has double unders. Okay, well, that's going to test right. your agility so, and your speed. So, yeah, let's kind of talk about that. So you, you might find you're going to level up in most of the movements, and there will be one or two that are kind of holding you back. Mm-hmm. For most, it's pull-ups. Um, either the static hold, they're actually doing a strict pull-up. Um, so that's what we're talking about when we say we're going to find out what that weakness is. So now we know where to target your efforts. Yeah, this is my favorite part because this is where if you're missing a movement, whether it's the pull-up or double unders or whatever, that's when you can sit there and say, okay, these are the movements I need to focus on. And then you set up a goal session with one of us, and we'll sit down and go over, like, we can, you know, give you the options of what we offer, you know, individualized program design, give you a few pointers and tips, you know, like, okay, well, what do you think the problem is? Is it strength? You know, and that's where we can guide is it you. nutrition? And help you. Yeah, we can guide you through these, this process. So, like, like Jay said, there, these tests are all based on the, what CrossFit um, believes you should be proficient in to be healthy and a good athlete. One of the biggest things about this level program is it once you get to that three and especially the four, it's exactly what you're going towards. You're going towards being an athlete. So you can't be an athlete and only be good at one or two things. You know, they don't win the CrossFit games because they're the best runner or the best lifter. They're good at a lot of things and anything that gets thrown at them. And that's okay if you don't want to be that. That's absolutely fine. Level one, level two, where you're in here and you're getting healthy, you're getting fit is a 90% of what we're working towards in our community. Um, but just know, like you guys said, to level up, you're, you're going kind of above and beyond that, and it's going to require a little bit more work and a little bit more dedication. So. Yeah, and everybody has weaknesses. Look at the God, CrossFit yes. Games. I mean, some athletes that I thought would make it back to the Games did not make it past regionals, and that's because some weaknesses were exposed. You know, like everybody has them. I have them. Corey and I know you have them. Jason... I know you have them when you were lifting, <laughs> once we get you back. But Blair has them. I mean, everybody has a weakness, and you just have to be able to identify it and work at it if you want. Yeah. So you want to get into our final point here? Um, a lot of people have kind of been asking about accessory work, if they should be doing it, what kind they should be doing. More wads or what right. most people say. Um, but in reality, you know, like Corian just said, if you are determined to get better and improve your weaknesses to level up. That's what the extra work is for. And we don't want to just throw it in randomly. We want to have a very specific thing. So if you can't get past level one because of your pull-ups, then we want to specifically work on your pull-ups. So we're going to do accessory work to improve whatever is holding you back there. Yeah, and there's so many things um, that... I would think that accessory work would count, um, whether it's, like we said, strength, is it your nutrition, or is it your recovery? Because I can sit here and I can have people who can do pull-ups, but they can't straighten their arms. So in reality, not a single one of those pull-ups count. Now, do you have the strength? Absolutely. But do you have the range of motion? No. So we got to take it back and we got to work on your mobility to help you also with those movements. Um, same with like our squatting, like if we can't squat below parallel. Maybe your assess- accessory work is mobility instead. 
And that's okay too. I agree with that. Yep, 100%. Mm -hmm. It's all dependent on the person. And again, we've talked about this in the past too, is going and, and just doing more wads to do more wads because we think doing more wads is going to make me better because that's what I see the athletes do on. That's ESPN. just going to burn you out. Yeah, ESPN. And just got to wad, 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 wad. I also tell fun. people you're just ingraining bad muscle memory. Yeah, the pro professional athletes don't wad. They probably wad like three or four times a week. Yeah. Like, so Metcon is a, a wad. What most people think of a wad is a Metcon. Doing something four times, they're probably only doing like four a week. Yeah. And just beats the body up too much. Yeah. I mean, I was... After the open, I was super pumped. I was like, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna really dedicate myself this, this year, which I am. I'm really taking my stuff seriously. But at first, you know, I fell into that trap of I'm gonna do the wads every day with, with class, and then I'm gonna stay after I'm gonna do the ninja, the juggernaut, and the alpha. You know, I, I lasted probably two to three weeks, and then my body just started hurting. You know, my joints. also an old man, though, too. Hey, no, I'm just kidding. Just things started, you know, it was, it was. I had no energy. I was starving all the time, you know, because I couldn't keep up with it. And now I'm, I'm kind of refocused working with my nutritionist, though, but I'm just doing the one watt a day, and then I'm doing two strength days because my that's goal your weakness is, yeah, my goal is to get strength. Yeah, I want to get strong, um, so that's what I'm focusing on. So I'll do the, my wads, my five wads a week, four or five, and then um, the other two days, or, you know, I, I throw in some strength. I added some... Um, mobility and stretching. We all know that's my weakness. <laughs> so uh, that's been going great. Uh, I feel better. My back's feeling good. My shoulders are feeling good. Hips are kind of getting there. So, and I'm sacrificing, quote unquote, um, some of those extra wads as well. And I'm okay with that because for me, being injured is not helping me work out. So I need to take a step back. I need to recover. I need to do mobility. And then it's making what I am doing much more effective because like my knees aren't caving on my squats anymore and um, my back feels good so um, like you said we all have our weaknesses and we all got to dedicate dedicate our time to it yeah. so use the time through test week figure out what it is that you want to attain or can't attain contact us and we will set up that goal session to go over what it is that you're having trouble with and we'll yeah, figure we'll, out a game we'll, plan for yeah, you yeah, we'll we help can tell you, you. Hey, we'll help you get to the next it's strength. level, whatever it is. Yeah, Mobility. Plus, what else comes after test week? Or is this before test week? This, the town hall? That's, oh, that's going to be before this week. That's going to be this. It'll be done already by the time this airs. Okay. Well. So let's ask. So I hope you were there. If you weren't, you missed out on a lot. Be at the next one. But we want to make sure that after test week that you're updating the levels board. Um, Heck yeah. Get I my think, purple marker last, out. Last time... So the Kenosha board was pretty empty. It was kind of depressing. And I know we have a lot of members who did it. So make sure you're updating that board. Like, if you level up, celebrate it. Put your name up there. Even if you're still level two, we want to make sure your name's up there because you can see it. You, can, you know where you're at. We've already talked about the reasoning why. It kind of keeps you motivated. Um, it's, you know, you see it every single day. And then, you know, Racine, that board's almost filled up. I have to get a bigger board. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, fill it up. Make sure that you put your name where you should be, and then that way, every time we do this, we can give you a patch for each designated level. Yep. Once you've been here for a year, you get your bag, yep. and all your patches can go on your bag. Yeah. Or if you have a weighted vest, some people are putting them on there. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. I've been seeing a lot of that. The, the patches go on people's vests. It's neat. Yeah. So, all right, guys, let us know if you have any questions about the levels program. Um, I think that's all, everything about yeah, it. I don't have anything else. I'm excited. Yeah, good luck, everyone. Um, hopefully you crushed. We'll be watching for those PRs week. and all those posts because Dave and I will not be around either. So. And then if you, want, yeah, if you want to schedule a goal session to kind of follow up afterwards, do it, and then we'll, uh, we'll get you set on your way. All right. So when we come back, we do our next episode, we should be getting pretty close to opening up our racing location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we'll be announcing a grand opening party and some other summer specials. So we'll talk to you guys later. Stay classy, Harbor Park. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. guys. Thanks for listening to Anchored at Harbor Park CrossFit. If you would like further information about our programs, visit www.harborparkcrossfit.com. We hope you'll tune in next time.